Colby's Clubhouse educates and informs children between the ages of 6 through 12 about how to deal successfully with everyday situations and challenges using principles of the Bible. Everybody. I'm Brett, and I have a letter from Ryan, who lives in Ohio. Ryan's been writing me a while about his problems with his older brother. Boy, can I relate. I have an older brother, too. And, well, we don't always get along that well. Anyway, he's pretty cool for a brother, but he's made a lot of mistakes. And my parents have had to take a lot of time to deal with all of that. Fantastic. She's back from the hospital already. Well, what they say... Dad, I need some help on my homework. Uh, hold on, Brett. Uh, uh-huh. Well, good. Uh, when do you think you'll be back home? Oh, good. Well, it's it's been a little rough, hon. Oh, no, it, it, it's Joe. He's having a tough time. Well, he, um, he Dad, got back... I really need some help. Brett, I'm on the phone with your mom. I'm talking about Joe. Um, Never mind. He got, he got back home uh, an hour after his curfew, so I, w I was forced to ground him. Anyway, some of you might have had the same problems with your family. So stay tuned, because God showed me some stuff I want to share with all of you.
Hello, Brett. We missed you earlier. What's wrong, Brett? I don't understand my homework. Well, maybe I can help. No, it's more complicated than that, Colby. Hmm. Well, I am very good at solving complex equations, Brett. No, I mean my life is more complicated than you can solve. Hmm. You are probably right about that. But the Lord can help solve it. What's going on, Brett? It's my parents. Actually, it's my brother. Oh, great. What's Joe done now? I don't know. He just keeps disobeying, and he does whatever he wants to do. My parents are so busy trying to solve all his problems, they don't have any time left over for me. That's sad. I mean, I get pretty good grades. I always go to church, and I never do anything bad. And my brother's always getting in trouble, and he's always doing bad stuff, and he gets all the attention. That's right, Colby. Brett's just about as good as it gets. <laughs> well, have you talked to your parents about this, Brett? No, it's like they're just too tired to talk to me. They don't even go to any of my games anymore. And nothing's ever going to change. Is this the way it's always been? Sounds like you're holding a grudge there, Brett. Yes, Brett, I agree. It sounds like you are attempting to retain your anger inside of your memory. If you were a computer, I would say you should delete that file immediately. It's not that, Colby. I just want to go away and live with my grandma. At least she has some time for me. Well, running away from your problem isn't going to help anything, Brett. Problems have a way of following you around until you solve them. And that's what the Spirit of God wants to do in your life. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, There's nowhere to run from the Spirit of God. He's gonna find me like that lightning's gonna find its rod. He knows when I sit or when I get up. You better wise up to this. He'll read your mind and he'll never miss.
I guess you're right, Colby. Running away won't really help solve all my problems. So what should I do? Well, it's always best to start with prayer, Brett. You need to ask God to help change your attitude towards your parents and towards your brother. Then you need to go to your parents and tell them how you really feel about all of this. Would you like us to pray for you? Yeah. Okay, come on, everyone. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for Brett and his obedience toward his parents. Help Joe to open his heart and change his life, Lord. Help him to find you in his life. And we pray, Lord, that you would change Brett's attitude towards his parents and his brother. Help him to keep on praying for Joe. Lord, because we know you hear him and you're working in everyone's hearts. Lord, please give Brett's parents wisdom to do what's right. And also please help them to have more time to be with Brett. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Don't worry, Brett. I know that God will answer that prayer. Thanks, you guys. But now I need some help with my math homework. I don't get all this stuff about sets and subsets. Well, I can help you with that. But the very first thing you need to do is to get your book out of the trash can. Come on, let's go work on it. Yeah. The police called me. They said you were in an accident. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes, I'm fine, Dad. Well, what were you doing? What were you thinking? I was on my way to a party. A party? Dad. You could have killed somebody. I you know. You could have killed yourself. I know. I'm sorry. Dad, I don't want to be like this anymore. I want to change. Can you help me? Well, well yeah, of course, son. Of course. We'll get through this. I'm just glad you're all right. Yeah, so am I. It was pretty scary. My dad was really mad. How is Joe doing now, Brett? He's gotten a lot better, actually. He's gone back to church with us, and he's home all the time now. If that was my dad, oh, I'd be grounded for life. He is grounded, but he's allowed to do some stuff with the church youth group. And now he's got his new girlfriend at church. Oh. Well, at least you have your family back, Brett. Yeah, but it still really bugs me. What bugs you? Well, for a while it got better, because I told him how I was feeling, like you said, Colby. And then my parents got so scared that Joe was going to go back to his old friends that they spent even more time with him than before. Well, he is probably just glad to have his son back, Brett. Yeah, but what about his other son? What about me? I understand how you feel, Brett. But you should be glad that your brother's back with the family. I mean, he could have been killed or put in jail. Yeah. But I wish being good had as many rewards as being bad first and then good. What are you talking about, Brett? It's like people don't notice you as much when you're doing good stuff as they do when you're doing bad stuff. Yes, I have noticed that about humans. We need to keep praying that God will open the eyes of your parents, Brett. Yeah, but I wish there was something I could do. Well, actually, there is. It starts with your heart. Why does everything have to start there? <laughs> well, God wants to work on your parents' hearts, and he wants to work on Joe's heart. But he also wants to work on your heart, Brett. What do you mean? Well, whenever you feel like somebody owes you something that is an attitude that god wants us to change you see god doesn't give his love to us because he owes it to us he just gives it to us because he loves us
I guess I have been holding a little grudge. How cold you? Mm, yes, but isn't it good that when God shows us something that he wants us to change in our hearts, that he also gives us the ability to be able to make that change? I guess. Lord, here I am again. I pray that you'll help me to change my attitude towards my brother and my parents. And I pray that you'll change my heart and put it in line with how you want my heart to be. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, this whole situation reminds me very much of a Bible story. Here, watch my monitor. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Raspy, how was your morning yesterday? Fine, if you don't count the spit up from my little son. Look at this. That is disgusting. What are you feeding this child? It's only some SpaghettiOs. <laughs> well, moving on to other things, let me introduce you to our three guests. A dad and his two sons. They have a story to tell. Welcome. How are all of you today? Can't complain, can't complain. You know, we had a new calf yesterday on the ranch. That is amazing. Did you deliver it yourself? Nope, but I videotaped it. My servants delivered it for me. Delivering a calf sounds fascinating. Yeah, well, next time we have one, we'll give you a holler. Hey, Gilman, maybe we can schedule Raspy Lee to deliver one of those. <laughs> maybe I will. Remind me to read up on that. Now, the reason we asked you to become guest on our yesterday show was to explain your experience of sibling rival. Now tell me, Brent, you must be the one who got into trouble. I understand you went to your father and asked him for your inheritance. What can a young child like you do with such a large sum of money? Uh, invest in houses, stocks, bonds? No, but I wish I had. I spend every penny of it foolishly buying chariots that lose their value the second you drive them out of the chariot lot. Happened to you too, huh? Yeah, and of course I spent way too much money on girls. Nice clothes, jewelry, all that stuff. And before you know it, I was out of money. My friends deserted me, and I was left to fend for myself. Then what did you do? Well, as you know, there was a bad recession of famine that year. So the only job I could find was feeding messy fat pigs. And before you know it, I ended up with my face in the mud, looking at the stuff the pigs were eating. And the funny thing is, I was so hungry, it actually looked good to me. You must have been really hungry. Hungry, Jess. Now tell me, all this time you had no idea where your boy was? I mean, he never bothered to pick up the phone and say, Dad, I'm fine, feeding pigs, eating slop, okay? Nope, never called. Sorry, Dad. It's all right, son. You must have been really worried. Absolutely. Every day I'd walk down the road and look down it and see if my son was coming. And then what happened? Well, one day I came to my senses and told myself, Self, here you are working and getting not much food. And your father's servants are working and getting plenty of food. And then here I am being tempted by pig food. So I went back to my father's house and said, Dad, I am no longer worthy to be called your son, but please accept me and let me work as one of your servants. Oh, I bet your dad was glad to see you. You bet. Told my servants to kill the fattest calf that was out in our field. And so we had a big feast. Biggest party we've had for years. Now tell me, all this time while your brother is whining, swining, and dining, you were at home working hard in your father's fields. And then all of a sudden your brother comes back and your dad throws a huge party. Didn't that make you a little bit mad? Yeah, I was mad. Here, I've been a good kid all these years. My brother goes and parties and blows all his money. And that my dad's actually celebrating the fact that he's come back? What did your dad say to you? Well, he said, son, all I have here is yours. But it's right to celebrate, for he's your brother, and we thought he was dead, and now he's alive. And you know what? God had to give me an attitude check. And there you have it. When a family goes through a tough crisis, they've got to stick together till the end and have the right attitude before God. And if we don't have the right attitude, God's Spirit will work in us to change our hearts. So remember that, everybody, and we'll see you next time 
on The Yesterday Show. You know, I really can't understand what it must have felt like to be forgiven after messing up really bad. I mean, here this kid blew it. And then when he came home, his father forgave him. That must have felt so good. Exactly. Oh, I get it. That's why you told us this Bible story, huh, Colby? So I can understand what it felt like to be forgiven after getting into a lot of trouble. You know, it's perfectly natural for you to feel a lot of anger towards your brother. But God doesn't want us to always do that which comes naturally. He wants us to love others with his love. And that's not always easy. I guess I can only love with God's love if I let him change my attitude. And that's when you can give God's love away to others. God has changed my heart, Colby, and I want him to keep on changing me. So he can use you exactly the way he wants. Whether, Whether at school, or, or at work, or in your neighborhood, or even in your own families. God loves you and wants to change your heart. All you have to do is let him. And then line up your thoughts and actions to those changes. Exactly. So everyone, have a great day, and we'll see you next time on Colby's Clubhouse. Bye!